everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week we are continuing on with the Felicity birthday slash spring dress project and as you can see I have it in the background here. I have actually done a tiny tiny bit since I last spoke to you in my last video which if you have not seen the first part of this video I made the bodice in the first part so I will link that up here and also down below in the description if you have not checked that out yet. But this week I am going to be starting with the skirts to this dress. Now this is a round gown so the skirts are attached to the dress almost all the way around. Uh, I mentioned this in the last video but basically the bodice like the skirts are attached to the bodice until it gets to like about here and then the skirts go underneath the bodice the front of the skirt panel it comes up and ties behind uh you can also pin it i guess in some cases but i'm gonna do a tie behind and then the front bodice closes over so it's not attached to the bodice right here but it's attached to the bodice here and then this part of the skirt is attached to this part of the skirt other than like a little slit right there for that overlap to take place. So that's where I'm at with the skirt. The skirt is going to be made out of three rectangular panels of the cotton sateen. And so right here, you can see that I've got a little bit already kind of mocked up slightly on the form. So this is what I started to do yesterday. I ripped my three panels. They are 51 inches long each. It was kind of a guesstimate as to how long they need to be because I know that the waist on this form is not necessarily sitting exactly where my waist is going to be. However, the nice thing with 18th century and also with this dress specifically is that like this isn't a floor length dress. So I want it to hit kind of around like low ankle length is my goal. So 51 should be more than enough to give me like a hem and maybe even cut off a little extra. Now obviously I am making this over pocket hoops so that means that you need more length going this way than you need here and here. And in the 18th century instead of leveling skirts like modern skirts where you would just chop off some at the hem, at the 18th century you actually wind up pulling up at the waist so you have an even hem all the way around the bottom. So frankly I could actually hem these panels as soon as I put them together and then figure out where they sit at the waist. I know it's kind of like a backwards method if you think about it in the modern sense, but it works well when you're working with rectangular panels because also you can just rip those panels and it's really nice. So that 51 inch length, that was enough to go over the pocket hoops here and then like almost come to the ground. Now this front panel again that's not going to be attached to the bodice at all. It is going to be attached to either a twill tape or a bias tape. I know that twill tape is kind of the more traditional thing that you attach 18th century skirts to. Frankly I have always done mine with a wide double fold bias tape because that allows the top of the skirt to be encased on both sides and then you just kind of like sew the the fold together like this once you get to the end and you wind up with ties so you can literally just take commercial bias tape and I usually do like a zigzag stitch over it and just have the ties all attached there and I find that it works really well so that's probably what I'm gonna do with the front of this as well now the pleating that I have done on this so far it is not at all the pleating that it's going to be I just wanted to like fake pleat it up and then kind of see what it would look like, how much I would need to make that line over. So I did that before I figured out how long I needed it to be. That said, I am going to be pleating it up. It just needs to be actually more densely pleated than what I currently have. Right now I've got about 5 eighths inch pleats that are not overlapping each other and I need them to overlap slightly because right now it's going farther past the edge of the bodice than what I need. I need it to stop right at the seam. And then I also ripped two other panels right here. They need to be pressed and sewn. Obviously they are wrinkled messes, but, and that one actually needs to be pressed as well, but these will get attached both together and then also they will get attached to that front panel there. And then there will be a gap of probably about like 10 inches, 8 to 10 inches, something like that, where it won't be attached at the top and that way they can overlap each other just a little bit. Uh, now what I've been trying to figure out is 
will that gap align with my pocket slits? If that does, then I don't need additional pocket slips. And I think that it will, or at least it will be close enough. If it's not, then I would have to create additional pocket slits in these. But I think it's going to be so far out that it's probably okay. Now that said, from the extants that I've seen, and uh, I linked these on the last video, but I'll link them down below. Again, there's a whole bunch of different extants that I'll link down in the description. Uh, but from what I've seen on those, it is not usually that wide on the round gown. Like it's usually attached to the bodice to about here as opposed to here. But mine seems to be coming up farther out just based on how the front of the bodice is constructed. So I feel like I might as well just go with this and have it be a little farther out. I don't think it's going to affect anything by having those slits wider set on my hips than the extant ones and that way this nice clean finished edge that I have on the bodice can just stay there and then the other skirts the back skirt sections will get attached to the back uh, obviously that does mean that the back will also probably be a little bit more densely pleated but that's okay because I really like it when it looks nice and full in the back so that's cool the very front by the way I do not tend to pleat on 18th century skirts I have seen some extants where it's pleated the same all the way around, but I like it where you have a little straight section right here, and then you have pleats facing outwards like this, and then even in the back, the pleats continue until you have like a little box pleat right in the center back. So that is what I am going to be doing first, is putting these skirts together. I know that I should honestly probably do sleeves first, because then I, when I do the sleeves, I'm going to have to deal with all of these skirts through the machine but I don't really feel like doing sleeves right now. I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind, maybe I'll do a mock-up for the sleeve. I do have the sleeve pattern from the Amalia bodice and I think that that will work perfectly, so I just have to mock that pattern up and then try it on. It's just a matter of then I'd have to put my stays on. And I feel like if I'm putting my stays on, I might as well have the skirts on. I don't know. So yeah, you might see me do the sleeve mock-up first. We'll see. So after all of that talk about the skirt and everything that I'm doing with the skirt, I did decide that it made more sense to do the sleeve mock-up and the sleeve first so that I'm not trying to get all of that fabric all the way through the machine, you know, messing with the skirt panels already attached to the bodice. So I have a sleeve mock-up and actually it fits perfectly. So that is really, really freaking fantastic. I love it. I did wind up having to do a couple of more pleats on the sleeve head here than I did when I was like doing this pattern last time and that is because I took in around like the strap and everything and I do still have that sort of, I don't know if it's even showing up, but that sort of like excess fabric thing going on here underneath. I think you can see all the wrinkles and you know what at this point I don't care. And done trying to fix it. It's not going away. I've tried fixing all of those seams. You saw that in the last video if you watched the last video. And clearly they want to be there. So you know what? They get to be there because done. So yeah, this has kind of been a week. Uh, I forget if it was before or after the last clip that I filmed. I think it was before. It's been a little bit, a couple days since I filmed that last clip telling you everything that I'm doing this week. Uh, but I found out that I'm actually going to be losing my job at the end of this month. They've decided someone working remotely for them doesn't work for admin. Um, the long story short version is basically my company got bought out, the company that I work for got bought out about a year and a quarter ago, and I've been working remotely for this new company who is based out of Utah this whole time, and they finally decided, yeah, remotely doesn't work. So. Yeah, so it's been a week and I really haven't been feeling like sewing at all, but I need to get this done in time for Comic-Con, so here we are. And actually working on the sleeve this morning felt pretty good, so hopefully that means I'll get some of my sewing motivation back. But yeah, uh, now all I have to do is, this is already muslin or possibly muslin? One of the pieces here, this is a two-piece sleeve, one of the pieces here is for sure muslin. The other piece could be unknown sheet because it came out of my mock-up fabrics 
bin that I have that a lot of which is sheets and some of which is muslin scraps so I can't tell but since it works perfectly and since it's the pattern like I don't have to make any adjustments to the pattern or save a mock-up or anything like that I am just going to cut out two more of the muslin pieces for lining and then I'm going to cut out the sateen for the outer I'm going to treat them as flat lining just together I'm doing this in the modern sort of method not the 18th century method so you know all it is is like right sides together and you turn it out that's all it is and I think it looks fine I know all the 18th century methods are so delicate and whatever I don't like them so yeah so yeah I'm really glad this worked this is gonna get a narrow hem on the bottom and then I'm going to have to figure out how her little cuff bit works I think it is just a band of fabric that is like pleated at the center right here with a little rosette on it so let's give that a go whoa okay hers is not a band of fabric actually if you can tell here Hers is just continuous with the sleeve, so the sleeve is just made really, really long. And then this is just folded up and then pinched back down in the center. So that's really interesting, but she also does not have a seam back here. So my sleeve actually cuts in below the elbow. This is the sleeve pattern right here, so you can see how it cuts in down at the bottom. And hers obviously doesn't. Hers is just all one piece. And then the seam is actually like underneath the arm, whereas I have seams here and here. So this method is not going to work for me, but it's good to know that it is literally just a straight piece, basically, since hers is the bottom of the sleeve. It's a straight piece and it's just pinched down here with two little pleats. And then she's got this little rosette on top. I'll probably just like make the rosette out of ribbon is my guess. And then of course she's got this little ruffle here and that ruffle matches the ruffle at her neckline. I just kind of threw her apron on her to get her out of the way. So yeah, it matches the ruffle there, which I have to figure out how to do since I have a closure here. So I might have to just do two pieces of ruffle, I guess. I think that probably makes the most sense and that'll really help to hide my chemise that tends to stick out right here too so that will be great you can see her little gathering on the back of her sleeve too so this is the pattern that I've come up with for that band it is going to be one large piece that's folded this fold which is right in the center here that will be the top of the sleeve band so that will be this fold right here and then this part will be a seam I don't know I'm torn maybe I should do it the other way because there's already a seam here and that would alleviate some bulk but I like how thin this looks so yeah that's why I'm thinking that's gonna be the fold so that fold I think needs to be 16 inches long total including seam allowance because that will basically get me here to here whereas the 14.25 is this measurement across including seam allowance so hopefully that all works out and then I think I mentioned but it's 11 total so that it will equal five inches wide on the outer end of the sleeve and then it'll get pleated down so it's like this on the inner end so for the cuffs first I'm starting with right sides together like this so that this like shorter 11 inch end is on the I don't know it's right sides together it's getting pinned it's getting sewn so I'm stitching right here half an inch from the edge then I am turning that while well, I'm clipping a little notch here and then I'm turning one side back over the other so that right sides are out like this and then I'm pinning the bottom and from here my plan is that this is going to act like one and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to kind of like in case in a way this little edge here along with the edge of the sleeve and that is going to wind up inside the bottom of the cuff because this cuff is tight to the sleeve at least it is on Felicity hopefully it will be on me and there shouldn't be really any way to see down in there like how I didn't know that this was all cut in one and so that little seam can be up here the seam allowance can be like right in here in the sleeve and then I can just put the ruffle down from the edge of the sleeve that way I get a nice clean finish down at the bottom and hopefully that will work and then this gets pleated right here on the inside of the arm to form the little tucks on the inside of the arm. So this is how you do that sort of cuff arrangement, like how you sew it. So you have the sleeve turned inside out and then technically 
this side right here underneath, this is going to be the right side of the cuff, like the side that you see on the exterior. Mine are both the same, so, you know, it was a lot less risk. But if you were to have, like, two different sides or maybe decoration, it would go on this side inside. And then this gets fully turned to the inside. It gets turned right side out. And it looks like this one right here. Now I have just gone and I've pressed it so that there is a little lip here. Doing it this way, if you do have exposed seams like this, you will see the seams, but I do also, I'll have trim right here. I'll have a little ruffle right there. So really doesn't matter. And frankly, I mean, if you roll it in a little, it's not gonna matter anyway. Like you're not gonna see that from the exterior, you know, your arms right here. So yeah, and now it will just get pinched down here with a little rosette and the trim will get added here. So I have this pinned at the moment right on the seam, the little pleats right here. But honestly, I'm not sure if they're in the right spot because when we look at Felicity's, I feel like mine would be lining up here, hers is here. So I think I'm going to wait until I actually set the sleeves and put it on so that I might wind up moving the pleats a little bit over to here. So I'm now prepping the strips for the sleeve decoration and also for the neckline. To be honest, I did not even really measure these much at all. I just went into my like muslin scraps and I found a piece that was about two times the length of the cuffs and it was originally wider than I needed. And I ripped this on the straight grain, so ripped it here, here in the middle, and here. Really what I did first was rip the edges and then just folded it in half, found the midpoint, and then ripped it. And I was like, yeah, that looks like it could be about the right width. So what I'm going to do now is three of the sides here are going to get surged, then the ends are going to get put together here and the other side that didn't get surged is going to be narrow hemmed and then I'm going to gather up this side right here and since it's about two times it should just gather up you know two times the width of the sleeve and I figured that would be a good ruffle and then I will see if I made this way too wide I think it's pretty close but I'll see if I made it too wide and basically however far up into the sleeve I need to put it to make it the right width then I you know I can move it up a little bit but I think that once I turn this narrow hem I think it's actually going to overlap by just about like half an inch which is what I was hoping and that should be good the same thing basically is going to happen for this neckline ruffle this one is I know too long right now like it is way more than two times the length of the neckline that is probably more like this because remember I narrowed out the neckline and I think I do have a pretty good width here I slightly measured like I did cut off a little bit from this strip or ripped off a little bit from this strip and again same sort of thing except here I obviously don't need to join it into a circle but I'm going to surge three edges and then I'm gonna do a narrow hem on one and then I'm going to gather it up and see if I like a two times gather or if I want more or less whatever for the neckline since it's like so present you can see like how much hers is really sticking up here and it's a little bit wider than the sleeve ruffle as well so this one I think is I don't know if it's a little wider. I think I ripped it the same because the wide seemed awkwardly wide. So anyway, I'm going to do basically the same thing, except on this one, once I decide how I want it to be gathered, I'm then going to cut it in half and I have to do narrow hem on the middle sides here because this is where it will overlap slightly, where the bodice overlaps slightly. So a little bit different from the cuff, but same basic concept. The ruffles are now pinned in to the sleeves and these I am going to sew by hand because there's otherwise no way to do it without getting machine stitching on the outside. So yeah, I'm going to whip these into place and uh, then the sleeves will be ready to set into the bodice. The sleeves are set. So they still do need to have this little bit tucked and the ribbon rosette added, but otherwise the ruffle is all sewn on now and they are set into the bodice and I will do skirts and more tomorrow. You guys, so I pleated up this half of the skirt. So first I've sewn together the three skirt panels leaving a 10 inch like 
gap basically at the top for where the overlap happens but I just pleated all of this part up this is one half of the back I pleated it completely by eye just kind of you know not measuring anything but looking at it so that it would have a pretty big overlap in the back and I think it's about like five eighths no it's like a half inch in the front and I was like okay well we'll see you know how much it needs to be tweaked to attach it to the bodice let me grab the bodice I laid the bodice over the top and it's a I mean, it appears to be a perfect match measurement. How the heck did I do that? I really do not know how that happened. So anyway, what's going to happen now is, I mean, I'm going to have to do the other side first and, you know, make it match this side. And I am going to double check that this is actually the match as opposed like, you know, pinning it as opposed to just laying it. But then what happens is that this gets folded up on the edge so that I don't see the edge. You know, it's a nice clean edge. And then this, the skirt, goes at where the waist is on here. So it'll basically be like up here, the top of the skirt. So it's like there and it gets laid over. And so that by the time it gets over here, it is just this little half inch bit at the top and then that will get whipped into place on the edge. I've decided I'm going to do hand whip stitching um, and I will also whip stitch the top of this in place at the waist. I'll probably baste it first to be honest just like on machine and then whip stitch that in place. So that's how I'm going to do that and hopefully that will make it kind of even at the bottom. I have not yet hemmed the bottom of the skirt. I've decided that I am kind of going to do it like the more modern type of hemming if there is any unevenness once I put this on, which there probably will be because of course there's really nothing in the back supporting the skirt and over here there's the pocket hoops, but my brain just couldn't really function with like, okay, so do we need to start it here and then go up in the center to balance that? Like that, I don't know, that just seems weird. So yeah, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it even at the waist and then even out the hem. So this is what the back looks like with it all nicely pinned into place. You can kind of see by these bumps right here, this is actually the top of the flat skirt panel. So right in here, all of the pleats are pinned and then I just pressed a while of the pleats so that I could get down to this point area. And then I just laid it out, matched up the sides here, determined where this would hit basically in that center pleat and just pinned it flat. Now I'm going to whip stitch all along the little edge there. And then I am going to whip stitch inside this edge so that this all gets attached up here to the bodice and whip stitched into place and that'll obviously just catch the lining not the outer so you don't see it from the outer and then the back portion of the skirt will be done the front is pleated up like you saw quite a while ago and just needs the bias tape on top and I need to put it on to make sure it fits though before I put the bias tape on so this is what it looks like with it all nicely stitched down. I actually decided to do a prick stitch and not a whip stitch because I just didn't like the idea of it going over the edge. And the prick stitch was really, really popular in the 18th century. So I think this would have actually been accurate, like this type of stitch. And yeah, it just looks really neat. A prick stitch is a type of back stitch, by the way, and you only see the tiny little bit in the front. So that was all done by prick stitch and it lays all nice and flat now. And the inside I did do with a whip stitch. So just like a pretty large whip stitch. I don't know if you can actually see the threads. It's pink thread too, but you can see one right there. They're pretty big stitches, like pretty much like every pleat. I tried to get at least one stitch per pleat. Some of them have a couple of stitches just because they're larger pleats. But yeah, that is all whip stitch. So that won't be apart from bodice. So I have the dress on now, obviously. I've put it on in order to check if like the skirt front part is ready to be put onto its bias band or if the pleats need to be adjusted. Now obviously there's a really big issue right here in the front because this is crossing so far over that like the center front is no longer anywhere near center. It should be here, it's here. So that's a big issue where I'm not 100% sure what to do with it, but I think that there are other issues that are leading to that issue, so let me address that really quickly. Though it just dawned on me, actually, it's not as big of an issue as I thought, because I'm wearing an apron, so under the apron, 
No one can tell what these points look like. I just would have to fix it if I were to ever want to take off the apron. But I don't have to fix it for Comic-Con this weekend, so that's good. So anyway, the other things that are going on here, I was thinking for a second that my pocket hoops, first off, I think they're a little bit crooked, which I don't know if I can really fix right here. But when I first put them on, they were just like instantly collapsing with the weight of the skirt, just like instant. And I realized it was because I had nothing in them to weigh down the bottom. So I've put a water bottle in this one and my cell phone in this one, and now they are staying up. That said, I just don't know that I like the look of them. Like, I mean, yes, they're big for one thing, but what is really bothering me is that my butt is really flat. Like, there's no definition right here, which I think is because all of that extra fabric from the skirt, it's actually coming all the way up to here for some reason, instead of here, which is where it probably ought to have been because this is my natural waist. I'm not sure how that happened because the rest of the skirt is actually laying nicely in back as far as I can tell. I mean, looking in the mirror over my shoulder, etc., it seems like it's laying nicely, like the pleats aren't warped or anything like that. So I don't think that I was supposed to have dipped it down to sit at my natural waist here, but it is weird that it's all the way up here and I think it's causing a lack of definition in my lower back, which I'm really really used to having because I'm sway backed so I'm really used to it going in here and then going out here but it's not really going in here right now and it's not really although it is going out here it doesn't look it because I've got these big old pocket hoops on the side so uh, I don't know I'm kind of tempted to try this on with a bum pad and see if that looks better now obviously Felicity does not have a bum pad the Bee Forever, really hideous Felicity, she does, but that's a whole different story. But my Felicity does not have a bum pad, she has pocket hoops, and so that's why I did this over pocket hoops. But really, no, I guess there were still round gowns in the 1770s, so there were sometimes round gowns worn over pocket hoops. It's just a weird looking silhouette to me. And part of me is wondering, will I like this better once I put an apron on and I cover up, you know, all the things that I don't like about it because an apron is also going to give me waist definition because there's gonna be ties right here. So I might go see what apron I have that I could just like put it on, even if it's just a waist apron and see if that helps me any better. I do have a white pinner apron. I'm gonna go try and find that and see if that helps any better but yeah that's what's going on here with this I was right this is not where this wants to be it does want to be a little over so I'm going to move those pleats over to right here on my arm so about an inch and a half over from where I currently have them I love the way the ruffle looks though I think that that looks just splendid and then there will be the ribbon rosette that goes on top of this as well and while I have this on I'm also going to take a look at the neckline ruffle now, one other note on this neckline ruffle, I had made this originally just about the same width as this. I didn't measure them, but they look just about the same. And I went and I ran my gathering stitches here, well, here on the edge, which is where they were here. And I kind of just held it up to the neckline when I wasn't wearing it, and it looked ridiculous. So I ran another set of gathering stitches about an inch in from that, and I think that that is going to make more sense. I don't know, I still have to pull this up obviously and try it, but I think it's just gonna make a lot more sense to be that shorter bit, because if I did it from here, it would stick up to here, and that just seems, I mean, hers is very high, but that seems really high. So I'm gonna pull both of them up and just see. If it turns out the bottom ones are good, I'll obviously just unpick the top ones, but yeah, it's definitely weird. So let's go try on that apron and see what that fixes. So I do feel like putting an apron on helps with the look of it bringing it in in the back. So I'm glad about that and obviously it covers up all those bodice issues too. So that is great. Next week, by the way, I will be making the apron and doing like the rosettes on the sleeve, possibly making a cap if I have enough time. That was one of the things actually that I was going back and forth on because Felicity, like the actual doll Felicity in this outfit is supposed to come with this 
little like ribbon tie thing with a posy and it sits right on the top of her head and her hair is in a ponytail. My Felicity has very weak hair so I don't want to restyle it and her hair is styled historically in a nice little like Georgian manner with little buckles and she's got her cute little cap from her summer outfit. So I am planning to do my hair like hers. Hopefully this dye job fades a little. I just did it today, it's very bright. But I'm planning to do my hair like hers and not do the weird little posy, especially because I don't have that for her. So yeah, okay, I am feeling a little better now with an apron on. The apron for this outfit will be a lot bigger. It's gonna come out all the way to the sides. This is from when I was 12 and I got this from Williamsburg. So somehow it seems very fitting for a Felicity project. So the main thing here though is that I do like the placement of the pleats on the front panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those inside a bias tape and I will show you what that looks like when I'm done. Except that I almost forgot that I wanted to show you ruffle first. So I have just gathered up a little bit of the ruffle. The higher gathering stitches that I put in afterwards were definitely the right answer because I feel like anything taller than this would look very strange. So yeah, that's what it's gonna be. I'm gonna just cut off the bottom, honestly. And it's also not very densely gathered at all. Like it keeps falling down in the back, but basically, I mean, this is what I have for half and then I will do another one on the other side and they'll just overlap in the center. But yeah, it's not very much at all. So I had way, way excess in here. So basically I'm going to mark this spot here, which I'm doing right now with a pin. And then I'm going to undo the gathers. I'm gonna surge off the excess at the bottom and then I'm gonna open up just a little bit of the hem that I put in at the top and that way I can, when I do hems on like a corner, I like to do one side, one side, then one side, one side, like as far as turning them twice. So that's why I'm opening that up a little bit and I'm gonna make two that are the same length and put them back on here. So let's go do that before I mess with other things. So I wanted to show you how this works. This bias tape is now on, like you can see, and it just has a zigzag stitch all the way down the end of the bias. And basically, you just take this and tie it around your waist. Now, for a lot of my petticoats, if it is like a front panel petticoat, I will actually have it long enough so that it can come around and tie in front but because this is the top layer, I didn't really want one more layer of ties in the front, and also my bias tape wasn't long enough. So I uh, had a tie in the back, which is fine, and now I can put the bodice part on. I have my ruffle pinned into place right now, and this has been sewn. So I just stitched this with the machine. I just like repleated it in the right place and did a little stitch right there because that's gonna get covered by the rosette next week. Well, next week for you, this week for me. And I'm gonna have to pin this off camera because I need to look in the mirror. All right, it is all closed up now and I did wind up adjusting the ruffle just a little bit to like make it slightly less gathered and I just kind of put a little bit more on the excess here. It wasn't much, it was probably like a three quarter inch difference or something like that on each side, but I like that look better now. So yeah, here we are. We have the Felicity dress basically done. Still needs a hem, this just needs to be tacked on and then I will add the flowers next week. So in between this week and next week, like the videos that you are seeing, I will do the hand sewing here and I will also do the hem, which is also gonna be hand sewn. I have decided that I am gonna go ahead and stick with the pocket hoops because once I do have the apron on, it does pull in the back that little bit and it makes me feel a little better. And of course with the pocket hoops, I match Felicity and that's kind of the point. So yeah, pocket hoops it is. And then next week, again, what you're going to see is I'm gonna make the whole apron, which is the floral pinner apron. And I'm also going to make ribbon rosettes. So I'll be sure to show you like how it is that those are actually done because I've never done that before on this channel. So hey, something new in amongst all of these projects, right? And then again, if I have time, I will also do a cap. If I don't have time, I think I have a cap, I hope. It's not gonna be an exact match to Felicity's, but then again, I don't have a lace that is as fine and nice as hers, because frankly, you guys, like, this is quality. Look at this. Look how cute her freaking cap is. 
right? It's, it's actually like legitimately nice. So yeah. And then of course, at the end of the week that you will be seeing next week, as in actually now five days from now, I'll be going to Comic-Con. So there won't actually be a final reveal in the next week's video. And I'm going to have to figure out if the Comic-Con video is going to come out before next week's video or after, because I think that I mentioned this in another video, the Ren Fair video, but I am back to doing two videos a week. So if you have other topics that you want to see me cover in other videos, please do let me know. I do have kind of a list that I'm going through of like other things that I'm putting in the Saturday videos, including some of the series that I was doing before, such as examining extant garments. But yeah, to make up for me losing my job and not having a definite income until I find another job, two videos a week it is. And of course, if you also want to help me out through other methods, whether that is Patreon, Ko-fi, the super thanks down here, believe me, I so, so, so appreciate it, especially right now when everything is just very, very much up in the air. Of course, if you don't want to support me financially, that's totally fine too. Even just going ahead and liking this video, pressing the like button, does really help me out or, you know, share this video online, get more eyes on it, etc. All of that really, really helps me out. So again, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. So if you do want to help me out, my Patreon and my Ko-fi are linked down in the description. And I also want to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Julie, and Mirage. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!